Oh, good morning world, X here. Today, I'm gonna take you through a day in the life as a chemical engineer in a process engineering role. And hopefully, you'll get an understanding of what exactly chemical engineers do. But first, let's get ready. I can't go to work like this. Nothing too fancy. Working in a chemical plant can be a little bit messy. There's a lot of machinery, and uh, you don't wanna wear anything too nice. Now we're going to the first meeting of the day. I have to hurry, it starts at seven. Chemical plants usually run on a 24-7 basis. Usually a chemical process is going to be continuous, meaning that it never stops except for a couple times a year when you're doing maintenance on it. In order to have a 24-7 process, you have to have a lot of people working overnight. And a lot can happen overnight. So this morning meeting allows a turnover from the overnight shift to the day shift. It's also an opportunity for day work people like most managers and engineers to get in touch with the process and see what's happening that day or that week. Every plant's different, but the majority of them have a gathering of the minds, a morning meeting that includes all the pertinent team members that have something to say about that plant on that given day or that week. So what does a process engineer do? Well, their job is to understand the fundamentals of the process system and try to find out what kind of impact changes are gonna to make to it. So outside of daily maintenance and operation, a process engineer focuses on changes in the process. Instead of focusing on one component at a time, like a pump or a reactor, most chemical engineers in this setting are gonna look at the whole process as a system, from the beginning to the end, from the raw materials to the final product. And everywhere in between, they're gonna to have to have x-ray vision and be able to see through the steel of a reactor and through a pipe and know exactly what's going on in there. So a process engineer is gonna to come to this meeting and they're gonna probably ask for help on certain projects they're working on that day, maybe a new installation or a new test they're trying to run, or maybe they're gonna help with some change that's going on, some unwanted change like a process issue or a quality upset. After this meeting, we're all up to date with what's going on with the plant and now we're gonna to get to work. So what are we gonna work on? It really depends on the day. Every day is different as a process engineer. We could be working on something more short term. Maybe it's like a really big problem that's happening that day and you only just found out in your morning meeting. Or maybe it's something long term. Maybe two months from now you're going to install a new valve or a new process change. Now starting at the beginning of our time scale, day to day, hour to hour, minute by minute operation of the plant is usually completely run by operators and maybe some mechanics. Process engineers rarely get involved with day to day regular operation of a plant. But when they do get involved, it's probably gonna be some big process change. Maybe we're starting up a new machine after it's been down for a long time, or maybe we're running a new test that day. Say there's some major process issue that's occurring. The operators have checked all their normal things. They still can't figure out what's wrong. The maintenance has fixed everything that could have been broken, and they still haven't figured out what's wrong. Well, they're gonna to go to a process engineer to try to troubleshoot, look at the data, and find out what exactly the problem is. Say you run into a quality issue, like you're making cookies on an industrial scale, and they're red cookies, but for some reason they're turning out more pink. Well, if they can't figure out what's going on, they're gonna to talk to a process engineer to find out what kind of chemical change is happening, how are the raw materials changing, maybe we can do some analysis on our dyes and see if it's being dosed at the proper amount, or maybe our dye changed, maybe our dye is being supplied by a different supplier that's causing some issues. This is stuff that chemical engineers are gonna work on on a day-to-day -day basis. Another thing chemical engineers will do on a day-to-day -day time scale is a test. Maybe they're testing the process to try to use some new additive. Say you're working at a water plant and they're trying to see if they can expand their capacity and they're trying to see how the process will change when you run a larger amount of water through it. A test is gonna to have to be managed by a process engineer who can account for all the different changes that might be occurring. Maybe you work at a paper company and you're trying to use a new wood chip supplier. You wanna make sure that your process operates with that supplier properly. Well, you're gonna to wanna to run a test to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as planned. A process engineer is gonna spend a lot of time planning out these tests. They're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything that could go wrong is accounted for. If we're worried about our wood chip supplier causing a color change in the paper, we're gonna make sure that we're measuring color a lot more intensely. You're probably gonna to wanna to plan out an experiment or maybe a DOE to make sure that this change in the process doesn't impact the final result. You're gonna to wanna to collect more data on your raw material and the final product to make sure there's no issues that are occurring and to make sure that your normal quality procedures can handle the issues that might arise. So that's something process engineers could do on a day-to-day -day basis, managing tests. That can last for a couple hours or even a couple days. It just depends on what the change is. Another thing process engineers are gonna do at this shorter time frame is gonna be startups and shutdowns. Oftentimes chemical plants run pretty smoothly and they're pretty well understood when they're running continuously. But when they start up and shut down, there's a lot of crazy changes that can happen 
and this is when most of the issues occur. So it's good to have someone who knows what they're doing when things are starting up and shutting down. If you're starting up a plant for the first time, process engineers are gonna have to be there day and night to get that thing running smoothly. It's gonna take a long time to go from completely cold equipment and a cold process that's just made theoretically to a fully functioning plant that's operating with a smooth, steady flow. For a plant that's already running, startups and shutdowns can also be a pretty big deal because that's when most of these changes occur that people are unfamiliar with. Process engineers will often help out with startups and shutdowns, especially when shutting down or starting up under unusual procedures. One good example of this is with polymers and polymerization processes. A lot of times when we're working with polymers, they can run pretty well and operate pretty smoothly when running continuously. But when starting up and shutting down a polymerization process, you can cause a slight temperature or pressure variation that can cause the polymer to freeze in the pipes and totally destroy your chemical process. So it makes sense that you're gonna to wanna to have a couple process engineers there planning that out and making sure that nothing goes wrong. So on a day-to-day -day time scale, that's what chemical engineers can be working on on any given day. So what about things that chemical engineers work on at a week-to-week -week time scale? Well, again, there can be some continuous quality issues that are persistent and they last for a long time that you're gonna be scratching your head on for quite a while. But maybe they're not so bad that you're gonna shut down. Say that you work at an industrial syrup making facility and you have a giant heated mixer that's designed to melt refined solid sugar into a liquid. This heated mixer usually operates with three heaters, but one is down for now, and you don't wanna shut down the process because you can get away with two. A process engineer might try to find a way to work with those two heaters and boost their energy output in order to make up for the one that's down. Since this is outside the normal operating procedures of this mixer, some chemical engineer is gonna to have to look at it and make sure that working with those two heaters isn't gonna cause any issue. That higher energy transfer in a smaller area can cause a lot of problems. Like maybe it's gonna have a lot more trouble controlling for temperature at the end, Maybe you're gonna have some issues with evaporation or maybe degradation with having more heat transfer in a smaller location. A process engineer is gonna to wanna to make sure that all those different factors are accounted for and they're gonna to wanna to make a new procedure or maybe even a test procedure to make sure that that whole system is gonna operate properly without any issues. Oftentimes whenever there's a failure in the process or a major issue, there's gonna be some sort of investigation to try to find out what happened and make sure it doesn't happen again. Process engineers will specialize in a root cause analysis approach to try to get down to the real reason for a problem occurring. Whether it was someone's accidental error or maybe it was a system-based issue, maybe there was some chemical problem that people weren't aware of at first. Say for example, you work at a balloon making facility. You work on these mylar balloons that all have different shapes and sizes and different crazy images with all these different colors. And you know, they're for birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's Day, different events. For some reason, leading right up to Valentine's Day, all the ones that you printed out recently had a really jacked up green color, replacing pink. So all of these Valentine hearts and love signs are all green. Now you have a bunch of green hearts and green love signs that are probably better suited for St. Patrick's Day, but no one can quite figure out what went wrong. Well, a process engineer can take a step back, look at the whole system and find out what failure occurred that allowed for these balloons to be so messed up. There's different types of analysis that can be used. Sometimes it's called the root cause failure analysis, there's taproot analysis, there's a kappa, which is a little more rigorous, and uh, this all comes down to trying to find out what the root cause of the problem is. The process engineer will run a meeting with maintenance and operations groups and everyone else who's involved to try to find out exactly what went wrong and how to make sure it doesn't happen again. Maybe the ink cartridge was simply replaced with the wrong one. Maybe the supplier gave us the wrong style ink cartridge. Maybe upstream, the pink color was mixed improperly or with the wrong ingredients that make it green. Sometimes a process engineer is gonna to have to play Sherlock Holmes to get to the bottom of these issues. Okay, so let's say that nothing really crazy is happening today. Maybe there's no big pressing issue or a test you're trying to run. There's no big issue that happened this week you're trying to investigate. Maybe we'll focus on one of our more long-term projects, like installing a new mixer. I'm sure you're tired of hearing this example if you watched my expectations versus reality video. You can find it right up there. To work on this project, we'll spend the day ordering parts, talking to suppliers, making sure that maintenance and operations teams know exactly what they need to do for the day that thing gets here, and making plans for starting up the new mixer and trying to find out what sort of startup procedures we need to put in place and what kind of tests we want to do to make sure it's running properly once it gets here. A lot of things have to come together for a project like that and it's gonna take months to plan and get everything together in place for the big installation. I might spend the day talking to suppliers on the phone 
or having meetings with our maintenance team to see if they need to do anything special on their installation day. I might have to work with some electricians or a process control engineer because my mixer has a new temperature probe that we're putting in. Maybe this mixer is scheduled to be put in next month, but the manufacturing company just called me and said that it's not going to be here for two months. How am I going to escalate that and make sure that it gets here on time? I might be on the phone with them all day if that's the case. There's also a lot of risk factors that we have to keep in mind when putting in this new mixer. Maybe it runs faster and at higher temperatures. We're going to have to make sure that those higher temperatures don't cause any safety or environmental incidents. Maybe this new mixer has a new heating mechanism or it operates at a much higher speed and it introduces some new potential safety hazards. Well, we're probably going to want to do a lot of risk analysis meetings, maybe even a HAZOP or some sort of what if, structured what if analysis mechanism to try to find out all the different things that could go wrong and how to control for this new risk factor. Of course, we're going to want to make sure there's some sort of quality control plan and new maintenance mechanisms put in place for a new piece of equipment. We're also going to want to make sure that different procedures are being changed and that the operators are trained to work with this new thing. Maybe operating at a new mixer efficiency or a new mixer speed is going to have some potential downstream quality concerns. Well, we're going to have to have another risk analysis for that kind of issue as well. There's a lot of different planning, paperwork, and meetings that need to go on for some change like this and maybe that's what we'll work on today. Another thing we'll work on at a more long-term basis is maybe we're going to plan some more of those tests I was talking about. Perhaps there's a new formulation where we're working on a soda and we want it to be extra carbonated. So how are we going to figure out how to put that extra pressure into the soda? I might spend the day working with carbonation experts to try to find a way to make that possible. We want to add just enough carbonation so that people notice the change, but not so much that the bottle blows up from the higher pressure or that it ruins the flavor. So we can take another step back and look at even bigger, longer term projects that a chemical engineer might be working on. These are going to be really jumbo sized projects that might take a whole entire year. Maybe we're completely revamping our quality control system or we're putting in a partner production line that's supposed to operate the same way and produce twice the amount of material. Maybe our company focuses on making nylon for rain jackets and our R&D department has found a new special coating material that we can apply to our process that will give these rain jackets super hydrophobic properties. They found out that water couldn't get through these things even with fire hose pressures. A really big chemical process change like that could take years of development and testing and research in order to properly implement it into the day-to-day -day operation. Perhaps our company mass produces plastic shopping bags, but now instead of making the plastic bags with fresh polymer materials, we want to use 50% recycled plastic bags to make the new ones. Raw material changes like this can take a lot of time, a lot of planning, a lot of process engineers coming together to make sure that they can be operated properly. So it's like I said, any given day, you could be doing a lot of different things as a process engineer. A joke we like to tell is that you don't run the process, the process runs you. And that's what's going to decide what you do each day. So I know this video was a lot different from most other day in the life videos. And I wanted to do it like this for a lot of reasons. But number one is because one day is really not a very good picture of what a day in the life is. It's probably going to take you at least a month or maybe a couple of years to understand exactly all the different things that a process engineer could be doing on any given day. Also, there's a lot of stuff in this process that you can't talk about and you can't show live and in action because there's so many different secrets that operate a chemical process. Walking through the pipes and the plumbing and the tanks of a chemical plant is like showing someone the source code of Google. And it's not something that anyone's going to want to do unless it's a highly controlled environment. In spite of all that, I really hope this video was really informative and I hope it really took you into a day in the life of a chemical engineer and now maybe you can walk away saying that you know what a chemical engineer does. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any other questions about process engineering. I read every single comment that you guys leave and I try to answer them either in the comment section or in a video like this one. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more like this one and thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys next time.